The curse of Rocky Colavito is a sports-related curse that supposedly prevents the Cleveland Indians Major League Baseball MLB, franchise from winning, be it the World Series, the American League AL, pennant, reaching postseason play, or even getting into a pennant race. Its origin is traced back to the unpopular trade of right fielder Rocky Colavito to the Detroit Tigers for Harvey Kahn in 1960. It was not claimed that Colavito placed the curse, and he has denied doing so. It is one of several curses believed to have stricken the city of Cleveland's major sports franchises for decades. The Indians won the American League Championship in 1995, 1997, and 2016, but lost all three World Series. Origins On April 17, 1960, the Cleveland Indians traded Rocky Colavito to the Detroit Tigers for Harvey Kahn. This trade was unique because Colavito was 1959's American League home run champion, with 42, while Kahn hit .353 as the AL batting champion. Fans in Cleveland were outraged by what they saw as the betrayal by the Indians' general manager, Frank Lane. In only two years with the Indians, Lane had taken a mostly successful 40-man roster and had traded away every player he had inherited. Detroit fans were mostly happy about the trade. Birth of the Curse The idea of the curse was first presented in print by Terry Pluto, who had previously covered the Indians for the Plain Dealer. In his 1994 book, The Curse of Rocky Colavito, A Loving Look at a 33-Year Slump, Pluto suggested that the trade, made by Indians general manager Frank Lane to blunt Colavito's popularity and end his salary demands, led to a 33-season stretch where the Indians did not finish the season within 11 games of first place from 1960 to 1993. By 1994, the team had not won a pennant since 1954, or a World Series since 1948. In The Curse of Rocky Colavito, Pluto writes of many of the misfortunes that struck the Indians following the Colavito trade. Getting Colavito back in 1965, from the Kansas City Athletics, but sending pitcher Tommy John and outfielder Tommy Agee to the Chicago White Sox in a three-team trade. John, who had won only two games in the major leagues, would go on to win another 286 mostly for the Los Angeles Dodgers and New York Yankees, and play on four teams that reached the World Series. A G, still a prospect when traded, would win the American League's Rookie of the Year award in 1966. He then would be traded to the New York Mets, where his hitting and fielding would be a major factor in their 1969 World Championship season. Trading pitcher Jim Mudcat Grant to the Minnesota Twins in 1964, for Lee Stange and George Banks. Grant was 28 years old and had won 67 games in his career. After the trade, he would win 78 more, including 21 in 1965, when he helped the Twins win their first pennant. Grant would later return to the Indians as a broadcaster. The alcoholism of pitcher Sam McDowell, who went from being one of the game's top pitchers in the 1960s to an unreliable pitcher who left the game at age 32. He would eventually stop drinking and become a counselor to athletes with drinking problems. The mental illness of first baseman Tony Horton, a power hitter who couldn't handle the stress of playing in the major leagues, and left the game in the middle of the 1970s season at age 25. Like McDowell, he would receive treatment and recover, but he never returned to baseball. The rushing of pitcher Steve Dunning to the major leagues. The second overall pick in the 1970 baseball draft, Dunning was brought straight to the major leagues from Stanford University without ever pitching in the minors. Called up too soon, he quit baseball in 1977, at the age of 28 with a career record of 23 wins and 41 losses. The Signing and Injury of Wayne Garland In 1976, Garland, a 25-year-old right-handed pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles, 
won 20 games and lost only seven. A free agent after that season, the Indians offered him a contract worth $2.3 million over 10 years. But Garland hurt his shoulder in his first spring training with the Indians, and chose to pitch through the pain rather than have immediate surgery and went 13-19 in 1977. He retired in 1980, at age 30, with a career record of 55-66. The 1984 trade of pitcher Rick Sutcliffe to the Chicago Cubs, along with two other players, for outfielders Joe Carter and Mel Hall and two others. Sutcliffe would help the Cubs win the National League Eastern Division title that year and won the NL Cy Young Award, then won it again in 1989. He won 35 games in just over two seasons with the Indians, then won 114 more after they traded him. Hall was a good hitter but a disappointment, and though Carter became one of baseball's top sluggers with the Indians, they never had a pitcher as good as Sutcliffe while Carter was on the team. Carter would be traded to the San Diego Padres in 1989 for catcher Sandy Alomar and second baseman Carlos Berga, possibly the best trade in the Indians' recent history as Alomar and Berga would be major cogs in their 1990s success. The Padres would trade Carter to the Toronto Blue Jays, where he would lead them to back-to-back -to -back World Series wins, including 1993, when his home run won the series. The 1987 baseball preview issue of Sports Illustrated magazine Following a surprising 84-win season for the Indians in 1986, the cover showed Indian sluggers Carter and Corey Snyder, and carried the words Indian Uprising and the subheadline, Believe It. Cleveland is the best team in the American League. The Indians lost 101 games that year finishing with the worst record in Major League Baseball that season, though some believe that this collapse was partially caused by the Sports Illustrated cover jinx as well as this curse. The 1993 spring training boating accident that killed relief pitchers Steve Olin and Tim Cruz and nearly killed starting pitcher Bob Ojeda. As reliever Kevin Wickander was so grief-stricken at the loss of Olin that he was traded in midseason and never regained his effectiveness the Indians essentially lost four pitchers due to one accident. Since the book's publication in 1994, Pluto has written two sequels, Burying the Curse in 1995 and Our Tribe in 1999, the latter insisting that the curse was still in place. Despite the evidence of a curse on the team, Calavito has denied ever placing one. Curse Beyond Cleveland on the day of the Colavito trade, the Indians played the Chicago White Sox in an exhibition game at 64-year-old Russwood Park in Memphis, Tennessee. Colavito hit a home run in the second inning, and reporters in the press box were informed of the trade shortly thereafter. Four hours after the game ended, Russwood Park, constructed primarily of wood in 1896, was destroyed in a five-alarm fire. Another curse? Prior to the publication of Pluto's book The Curse of Rocky Colavito, there had been another explanation for the Indians' difficulties, one that came after the 1954 World Series but preceded the 1960 Colavito trade. The Indians fired manager Bobby Bragan in 1958. According to the story, although he always denied it, Bragan walked out to the pitcher's mound at Cleveland Municipal Stadium and placed a curse on the Indians, saying they would never win another pennant. Recent Years In 1994, the year Pluto's book was published, the Indians moved out of aging Municipal Stadium and into the then-new Jacobs Field. They were just one game behind the White Sox in the newly created American League, AL. Central Division when a strike put an end to the season. Despite the abrupt end, this was the first time the Indians had genuinely been in a pennant race since 1959, Colavito's last season before being traded away. In the years since they moved out of Municipal Stadium the Indians have enjoyed success in the regular season, winning eight division titles, including five in a row from 1995 to 1999 and three American League pennants. 
but disappointing failures in the postseason have demonstrated to believers that a curse may still loom over the ball club. In the strike-shortened 1995 season, the Indians won 100 games in a 144-game season, finishing a record 30 games ahead of the second-place Kansas City Royals. They swept the Boston Red Sox in the AL Division Series, ALDS, and defeated the Seattle Mariners in a six-game AL Championship Series, ALCS. They appeared in their first World Series in 41 years, facing the Atlanta Braves, in a rematch of the 1948 World Series which had been played when the Braves were still based in Boston. The Indians lost in six games, including a 1-0 loss in Game 6 in which the Indians only recorded one base hit the entire game. In Atlanta's five trips to the World Series during the decade, Cleveland would be the only American League team the Braves would defeat. In 1997, the Indians were again in the World Series, and faced the Florida Marlins, a team established five seasons earlier. The series went to Game 7, and although the Indians scored first and led the Marlins 2-1 with one out in the bottom of the ninth inning, reliever Jose Mesa was unable to get the last two outs. The Marlins tied the game, and then won it in the bottom of the 11th, 3-2. In 1998, the Indians won the AL Central Division, but lost the ALCS to the New York Yankees, despite being up two games to one with games four and five at home. In 1999, they won the AL Central Division, but lost the ALDS to the Boston Red Sox, dropping the last three games after winning the first two. The failure to win a World Series despite five straight division titles led to the firing of manager Mike Hargrove. In 2005, the Indians took a 92-63 record into the final week of the season with a firm grip on the wild card spot, only to lose six of their last seven games and lose the wild card to the Boston Red Sox. In 2006, the Indians cut Brandon Phillips in order to retain Ramon Vazquez. Vazquez was later cut by the Indians, while Phillips became a standout player in Cincinnati, winning four gold gloves, a silver slugger award, and becoming a three-time All-Star. In 2007 the Indians led the Boston Red Sox three games to one in the ALCS, with AL Cy Young winner C.C. Sabathia pitching the closeout game at home. But Boston rallied to win games 5, 6 and 7 and outscored Cleveland 35 to secure the AL pennant, and eventually the World Series. In 2009, two former Indians pitchers, C.C. Sabathia and Cliff Lee, started Game 1 of the World Series for the New York Yankees and Philadelphia Phillies, respectively. Both Sabathia and Lee had won Cy Young awards with the Indians. In 2013 the Indians finished the season going 21-6 in September, including a 10-game winning streak, to earn the top wildcard spot only to lose the AL wildcard game to the Tampa Bay Rays. In 2016, the Indians won their first AL pennant in 19 seasons, but lost the World Series to the Chicago Cubs who ended their own curse, after leading the best of seven series 3-1. In 2017, the Indians finished 102-60 and won the AL Central. During the season they won 22 games in a row, the longest winning streak in American League history. They won the first two games against the New York Yankees in the ALDS, and then lost the next three, ending their season. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.